greater Amazon integration project that we're doing, the piece that we're talking about today is specifically the part where we're taking inventory from the XB warehouse, where you guys you know hold most of your inventory, and we're shipping it to the Amazon FBA warehouse system so that they have the inventory available to sell on, on Amazon. So essentially what we're trying to do is transfer some inventory. For example, I've got uh, a transfer order on my screen here where we're transferring these lounge pants. And we want to transfer these from the XB fulfillment warehouse where you guys have a lot of your inventory. And we want to send it to, to Amazon so that they can use it in the FBA stores. The current process uses what's called a transfer order in NetSuite, which is essentially telling NetSuite, hey, we're transferring inventory from one location to another. And currently, this is the same process that you guys use. We're just going to have the one transfer order in NetSuite and NetSuite will communicate that transfer order information to Amazon so that there's no other manual input involved. All you have to do is essentially create the transfer order, initiate it, and those, those products will flow to Amazon with Amazon being aware of what's coming. In general, the process with a transfer order is we're going to have a transfer order. And from that transfer order, we're going to create item fulfillments that are the items shipping from this location. And then once those items land at Amazon FBA, then we're going to create a matching record called an item receipt. So I'll pass the screen off to uh, to Chidi just because he's going to show the process uh, overview real quick. And then once he's done with that, we'll do a little demo of, of the actual system. All right. Thank you very much, Jacob. I'm just going to highlight the flow. We'll go to technical here because we don't need all that detail on this call. We have the transfer and item fulfillments and receipt which Jacob mentioned. I'm just going to introduce one more record. This uh, process is a multi-step process. So we decided to model it in, in the following way. We have a record that captures shows all the Amazon data, so the back and forth, the payloads and everything. That's more for you and your team, Aiden, and maybe for you, Chris, if you're ever needing to debug something and you want to look at the raw data, there's a reference on both the transfer order and the item fulfillment. Each one of these has a one-to-one -one relationship with one of those records, but the key thing is we propagate the status onto the transfer order or the item receipt. So what when Jacob was sharing a while ago, you'd have seen the pending fulfillment state in blue, and we had a yellow state that says FBA something. Those FBA states are really you know, pulling in from this record. So you will need to touch them directly. In terms of the flow itself, I mean, I think the key thing to remind, remind ourselves here, this is quite a complex flow. I mean, the error handling here was quite intricate because we're making all together more than 10 calls, different calls to Amazon at different points to get this process working. I'm not going to go through each one of them. You know, that's, that's too much detail. But the key thing is we start with transfer order. At some point, we get the fulfillments. Then we sync back to XB so that they get the information that we're ready. And then at some point they have packaging data. And with that packaging data, we can go ahead and get to the point where we create the labels, the shipping labels, and which we send them back to XP. And then once they have those shipping labels, they do their packaging and, and, and send things out. And then we'll get a trigger back that the shipment has happened. So things are on their way now to Amazon, which would trigger us to move the item fulfillments to a ship state in NetSuite. And then from that point, really, we, we just have to wait until Amazon indicates that they've received the items, which you know could take days or weeks. I'm not sure exactly how long, but we basically pull every so often, like every four hours or every day, that's a configurable parameter. And then only when Amazon tells us, yeah, we received those goods, we go ahead and create the item receipt in NetSuite and the process ends. So high level, that's what's happening. I'm not going to bother with all the calls, but for each of these states, the only thing I'd like to mention is if we get an, an error in any of these states, we've built a solution so that we would identify where we had the error. And if it's one where we can you know, retry the process, we'll show a retry button that someone can go and click and you know, get things going again. So we've, we've built in quite robust error handling and tested it extensively, but that's, that's, that's beyond the scope of this call. So I won't go into all that now. And I'd like to leave it here. So actually to clarify, we're actually receiving the locations up front, right? And then we pack the units according to where they're destined to go, I guess. Right. From what you do now is different, but this is the way they specified. So where we make the request, they give us plans which include the Amazon destinations we need to send to. And from that point on, we just use that. I mean, and when we are sending the information to XB, each of these fulfillments has a destination which Amazon gives to us at the very initial step when we created those uh, shipment plans. 
But when we when we do the demo in a moment, we'll see typically Amazon, even if you have very few few items, we'll split into at least two. So we'll be able to see that in, in a moment. Okay, I'll stop sharing now and hand it back to you, Jacob. What we're going to do is we're going to create a, a new test where we're going to create a transfer order that we're sending from XP to Amazon. This is a transfer order to be generated. So I got a new one kind of started here. I'm, I'm kind of just making a copy of the last one. Um, essentially, I just create it in this pending approval format. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the items I want to send with these specific locations. So we're, we are shipping from XB to Amazon consignment. We'll add whatever items. We're just got a small subset of items here. These items should be synced, obviously, with Seller Central. We can go ahead and just save the transfer order. So this would be similar to creating it via CSV. It'll get us to this stage right here kind of automatically approves itself, but doesn't start the process to Amazon yet. So I can look at the transporter and say, okay, yep, yeah, this is what I want to ship. Now at the top, you'll have a new, new button that you didn't have before. As long as this two location is Amazon consignment, you'll have this ship to Amazon button here. And this is what's going to actually initiate the process. We don't have to do anything in Amazon at this point. We've just come into NetSuite, put our order in. And if everything looks okay, we're going to go ahead and hit this button. And just uh, the reason we did this is because, you know, you might need to review stuff. If Technically, if, you, if we wanted it to be automated, once you update, tra upload the transfer order, we could do that. But we, we you know, adding this extra last step where someone can check before we start the process. Exactly. So once you initiate it, you'll start to see this new status that Chitty mentioned. It says FBA and then a, a status. So right now it's pinging Amazon and creating uh, these shipments. And I just refreshed the record. And you'll see that that happened pretty quickly, that it got information from Amazon that it wanted these, you know, 20 items or so to be split into three different packages. So it generated three item fulfillments per Amazon's request. If I go to these item fulfillments, Cynthia, you can kind of see this. The shipping address should be different. Like these are going to be different FBA warehouses. So this one's going to Phoenix. This one's going to Goodyear, Arizona, and this one's going to Stockton, California. So Amazon came back and it told us, it said, hey, to Phoenix, I want you to send these 10 items to Phoenix. That's where we need these. To Goodyear, Arizona, we would like you know these six or seven items. And then uh, to California, just send these four items. So that's the information we received from Amazon was to essentially ship these quantities to these different locations. So one thing I'm going to show you, this is back at the transfer order. This transfer order, just so you kind of see it, on the custom tab over here, it has this one-to-one -one link to the Amazon integration data record that Chitty was talking about. This is the record that holds communication to and from Amazon. The item fulfillment is going to display the status of the integration record. When I go to the Amazon integration data, I can kind of see what happened here is we went from ready to initiate fulfillment to pending fulfillment. And this step, the reason that this changed from ready to initiate fulfillment to pending fulfillment is because there is a flow between, oh, sorry, I can't, don't yeah, have much NetSuite, zoom going on. NetSuite and Manhattan, right? Yeah, NetSuite and XB or Manhattan. There's a flow that says, okay, send that item fulfillment data to XB. And so once that item fulfillment data from this item fulfillment goes to XB, this status will shift ready to initiate fulfillment to pending fulfillment. So once on the item fulfillment, you see it says FBA pending fulfillment. That means that we have now transferred this item fulfillment data to XB. So XB now actually has the information for this item fulfillment in their environment. So I don't expect them to respond very quickly. Usually it takes them maybe an hour or two to get the data processed through their system and send us the information which we need. So I'll do this next step manually, but you'll see kind of what I'm doing. So right now we're in this state and what, what we need to find out from XB before we go ahead and ship this is we need XB to tell us how they're going to package these 11 items. There's these four different items split up in these different quantities and they're, they've got to package these in some way. And I have to tell Amazon that package information so that they can plug it into their calculation system so they can give me a shipping link because they need the package details to create a shipping label and to create a kind of an internal transfer order that says, okay, here comes 
this package. So normally XD would do this. I've got this item fulfillment and I'm, I'm waiting in this pending fulfillment state, I'm waiting for XB to tell me those package details. So I'm going to come over here and generate the package details manually. So this is kind of, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I'm um, going back to the uh, transfer order step mm -hmm. before you got the IFs and then you hit that Amazon button and I click the Amazon button. And then is there something that tells me how many IFs now have been generated and what the, I, you know, how, how do I now, because I, um, I, I'm part of, um, I receive fulfillment. So, um, I give XB a heads up, right? So like I tell them, here's what's coming down the pipeline, Here, you know, so in this instance, we, we obviously have to change our SOP and the communication that gets shared. But one of the things I think that's important to them is understanding, all right, what should I expect to see coming to me? Right. Great question. So I'm on the transfer order here on this screen. And once, once you hit that ship to Amazon button, it'll kind of reload to this main page where you can see the items. And yeah. all you need to do is navigate over to this related records tab. Okay? Oh, excellent. Okay. And the thing you have to do though, is you have to wait till this says ready to initiate fulfillment. First, when you click it, it says creating shipments. So it takes a minute to create the item fulfillments as it gets mm -hmm. that information. But once you refresh the page and it says ready to initiate fulfillment, then you'll be able to go to the related records here and see, okay, these are the item fulfillments that are going to send to XB. They should receive these and should already be prompted to start processing them. These are the different IF numbers that they'll, they'll receive in their system in the next like five to 10 minutes that have the package mm -hmm. data and they're all going to different locations. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. Cool. And so like these, here's an item fulfillment, here's an item fulfillment, and here's an item fulfillment. So, so those are the three that we see on the transfer order here. For example, this first one that had 11 items on it, I'm looking at the integration data record. This is just kind of the NetSuite record that holds the communication back and forth between Amazon. And I'm going to simulate us getting a package information message from XB. So normally this would be a manual process where Chris or Cynthia or Aiden says, okay, how are, how is all these 2000 units being packed? And like, what, what do the boxes look like? What are their dimensions? What are their weights? Normally that'd be a manual communication. Now XB is just going to send us a kind of a message that looks like this. It says like, Hey, you know, we've got this one box. Here's its dimensions. Here's how much it weighs. And here's what's in each box. Like they could have three boxes for this one item fulfillment and it'll split it out into each box and say, okay, the box one has this box two has that. So real quick, I'm just going to transfer this over. So I've got two larges, three mediums, four XLs and two smalls. So this is kind of like a sample of what the message they would send to us is. It says, okay, this is the dimensions of this box. And just to retrieve and this, just an FYI for you guys, this process would happen automatically in the background, but just because we don't, you know, we don't have XB on the call, we figured we, we know how the data should look. So we're doing it by hand, but normally you wouldn't have to look at anything like that. It's just going to happen as soon as XB triggers that information to us, you'd see NetSuite respond. Okay. You don't need to worry about JSON or any of that stuff. Yeah. Thank and you for, for Aiden, clarifying It's good to know that. what's yeah. happening just so if you want to debug, you could know what to look out for, but nobody has to worry about this in practice. This process that I'm doing is automated process. I'm just doing it manually to keep the flow moving along. What would happen is XB would then send us this message automatically from their system. What happens is when they send that to our system, it's going to update this package details field. So XB will automatically update this field here. You see now the status has changed. And if I reload the item fulfillment, show the same thing there. It says computing transportation costs. So now that Amazon has the package information, they can create us a shipping label and tell us how much essentially that's going to cost. I think the reason that we do it this way is because they have really good shipping rates. So we kind of just accept whatever shipping costs they give us. And so it looks like they already were able to generate those shipping costs, but now it's going through this next step here. It's uploading the package info feed. That's not super important for you to to know specifically, but essentially what it's doing is it's communicating which items are in which boxes. Like that making sense to everybody so far? Yes. Awesome. So I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. It's, it's kind of working through communication with Amazon. We'll see here 
I do have during certain stages of the process, I've got this button on my on my integration data record called void transport. I don't want to use that, but if there was ever a situation where we had to, we, we could. Jacob, while we're waiting, maybe it's a good idea to show on a different transfer order how an error, like an error scenario and how it would look just so they get a sense of that. I think we have a few in the system. Sure. So this is not, this is a different transfer order that we, we were working on in a different, different situation. But what you see here is uh, pretty obvious. I'm on the transfer order. So like this in theory was a transfer order that we submitted to Amazon to send, send these items. If for some reason, one of these item fulfillments has an issue communicating with Amazon or communicating with XB, or there's some issue in this, this whole long extended process. If even one of them has an error, it will display back on the transfer order record. So on this main record, you would see an error. So right now I only see one error, which means only one of these three item fulfillments has an error. So if I, if I click on it, it will take me to the integration data record that has an error. This error, I, I wouldn't worry too much about the error itself. We kind of resolve this. It tells you a little information about the error. This is the status you're in. And then also gives you a little button that says like, you have one chance to retry it. If for some reason you run into an error, you'll, you'll, it'll be very kind of like obvious to you, both on the item fulfillment and the transfer order that you've got something going on wrong. And from there, we can kind of troubleshoot because it's such a complicated processes there's lots of places it could run into an error we don't expect to see any but that's kind of why we got it set up like this other statuses you know you can see voided transport or completed transport but i think in general we don't expect to see these errors is this new build out is there a way to get a net suite to send an alert if there is an error yeah that should be doable okay so now, when I go back to this original transfer order we were looking at, it's in this state pending fulfillment, which means that all three of the item fulfillments are also in this same state or, uh, excuse me. <laughs> or pass. In that state or yeah, pass. Or, or pass. They're all at least at this place. So pending fulfillment here, pending fulfillment here. And then this one is pending shipping. This is the one that we gave the, the package details to. And so if I go back to the integration record that's tied to this item fulfillment, I'll see that it's also in pending shipping status. And next big piece here is we actually missed a, a status while we were chatting. Once it's finished with this stage where it finishes uploading the package information, it starts this step where it goes to Amazon and it asks for shipping labels, but it uploads that package information and then it generates the shipping labels from Amazon. And once the shipping labels are generated, it moves itself to this shipping labels ready status. So like at any point, if I refresh this, I could have seen any one of those statuses. I could have seen uploading package info. I could have seen generating labels. I could have seen shipping labels ready. And now I see pending shipping here. And what that means is that we found the shipping labels. We got the shipping labels from Amazon. And then we actually already sent them back to XB. This shipping labels field holds all of the shipping labels for XB. This is just like a URL that I could pop open here. And this is what we sent to XB is we sent them this URL for that box. So like they could have sent us three boxes. We would have sent them three shipping labels. They'll be able to just print this FedEx label or UPS label out and attach it to their box. So that's why this one, now that the, the labels have been sent, they sent to XB and now it's pending shipping. So that's why we're in the state pending shipping is because we have given XB the shipping label. So they have everything they need now to just go ahead and ship this order. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. So we've essentially done the complicated part of the process, which is first go to NetSuite, create a transfer order. Second, talk to Amazon to create an identical transfer order to tell them that we were sending them product. Third, we've communicated the transfer order details that Amazon gave us to XB so that they know what things to ship where. We've then got the package information from XB as far as what type of boxes these are shipping in and you know what items are going in what boxes. We've communicated that back to Amazon. We've got shipping labels from Amazon, and now we've transferred the shipping labels back to XB for shipping. The next step is that XB will send us a communication that essentially says, okay, this, this item fulfillment has now shipped. We got the shipping labels, we taped them to the box, and we shipped it. I don't have, like we don't have XB on the call, so it's kind of hard to send that shipment notification correctly right now. 
as far as a demo standpoint, this is kind of where the demo will end. But really all that's left from here is we get that communication back from XB and then we tell Amazon, hey, that product has now shipped, which technically they know because they have the tracking number. We tell Amazon, hey, we shipped the package. And then we go ahead and we just wait. Like Chitty was talking about, we're going to ping the system kind of like every four hours or so, or we could do it more frequently to say, hey, has that box been received? To go ahead and create the item receipts to finish the transfer order. Does the record hold then the tracking number? Um, XB sends sends us the tracking number once they send us the shipping notification. So this one's been completed, and when they when they marked it shipped, when we got that shipping confirmation, they included yeah. the tracking numbers. Okay, great. Okay, great. So that really is a pretty good overview.